All right, everybody, thanks for joining us. And hello, I'm Dr. Rahul Tibar. I'm a board certified Permanente General Surgeon practicing in suburban Maryland in the District of Columbia. I'm joined today by my incredible colleagues, Dr. Gao Chen and Dr. Doc Winston, live from our operating room here at the Kaiser Permanente Largo Ambulatory Surgery Center. Along with our colleagues from many other surgical specialties, we perform a variety of different surgery procedures here. But over the last year, we've greatly increased our capabilities by bringing robotic surgery to our ASC. We're very excited to be talking to you today and taking your questions to help explain this state-of-the-art technology and how it can make surgery at our ASC safe and comfortable for our patients. I'm gonna ask my colleagues to introduce themselves and briefly highlight their expertise. Dr. Chen? Hi, I'm Gao Chen. I am a board certified general surgeon practicing in Northern Virginia at Kaiser Permanente. I um, also have a fellowship training in minimally invasive and robotics. I'm a neurologist um, with Kaiser Permanente practicing in our nation's capital as well as suburban Maryland. Um, I'm very excited to share um, our experience with robotics and Please, if you have questions or comments, uh, put them in the chat and we'll get right to them. All right. Well, this month marks our one year anniversary of performing robotic surgery at our ambulatory surgery centers. And that leads to the first question that I've heard from some people, which is really basic. Dr. Winston, what is an ASC or ambulatory surgery center? So, an ambulatory surgical center is a place where outpatient surgery is performed. Usually when you think about surgery, you think about going to a big hospital with a lot of people, a lot of beds, and staying in the hospital overnight in terrible food. At an ambulatory surgical center, um, it's very different. You're, you're coming in, um, you're getting your surgery done safely, and you are going home generally the same day, if not the next morning. Um, ambulatory surgical centers have been in place for about 30 years, and we do a lot of surgeries safely and effectively there, and we're very happy that we're able to add robotic surgery to the repertoire. That's great. Dr. Chen, can you describe what's involved with robotic surgery? Yeah, absolutely, thank you. Um, it's funny, you know, most people when they think of robotic surgery, they imagine C-3PO operating on them, but it's really not the case. Uh, it's, What's involved is this machine that's right behind us. Uh, this is the Da Vinci XI robot, um, which is a sophisticated surgical tool that leverages technology to make complex surgical operations minimally invasive. It enhances the surgeon's abilities when we sit at the command center for this robot. Um, and when we sit at the console or command center, we experience um, 10 times the magnification for sight. We can control all four of these robotic arms simultaneously, and the instruments mimic our hands, wrists, and finger movements to be able to do very precise operations for you. Now, one of the questions I get a lot from people who are not familiar with robotic surgery is, well, is the robot doing the surgery? Um, or people think that maybe we're not in the same room as the surgery, we're sitting at home doing this. Dr. Winston, can you talk about that a little bit? Like, what's, it, what's the real process here? Yeah, uh, that's a very good point. I know my patients, when we mention robotic surgery, they usually ask, is it like Voltron? They're like, right. not yet, it's not. Actually, um, what happens is that this is the actual surgical device, the robot per se, but the surgeon is controlling the robot at all times. I'm just gonna take you all on a quick walk over and show you where the robot surgeon is sitting. So the robot, while it's over here, the surgeon actually is sitting at a console nearby where they're able to look into this very powerful microscope and then use the controls to be able to perform the surgery safely and efficiently. And at, at no time is the robot um, doing anything without the surgeon's control. And in fact, um, for a lot of cases, there's actually two surgeons involved. 
one surgeon that is sitting here and another surgeon that is back at the bedside assisting. Um, so making sure that we do it the same efficiently and safely. That's a great point, Doc. And a lot of times people wonder whether they're going to be alone in the room with this machine. But in reality, we're here with the whole team. Can you talk about a little bit about who, who's in the room and what's involved in this large team that does this procedure? Yeah, absolutely. So surgery is a, I, I tell folks, the surgery is a team sport. It's not just, even though you may go see your surgeon in the office and that you're the one that's talking to you about it, it is really the effort of a lot of people. Um, it's the surgeon. Um, and in some surgeries, there's two surgeons. There's a professional surgical assistant. There's professional technicians who are helping with the tools. There's nurses making sure that everything is happening in the background. And then obviously, um, up top, uh, there is anesthesiologists and anesthesiology. Um, so there's a lot of people in the room and even outside the room making sure that this entire experience is seamless and safe. So, Dr. Tibar, um, you pioneered and direct the robotic program here in the Mid-Atlantic states. Um, can you explain how we're also able to perform the robotic surgery in our ASCs? Sure. So, here at the Largo Permanent, the, the Largo Ambulatory Surgery Center, we have pretty advanced capabilities. And we routinely do surgeries such as hysterectomies, joint replacements, mastectomies and a, a wide range of things. And we also have overnight stays. Uh, and that made it logical for us to get a Da Vinci XI surgical system so that we can do procedures here where our patients are gonna go home either the same day or the next day without having to do them in the hospital. And what that does is allows us to do the same exact surgery just as safely, just as effectively, and give patients the option of having that state-of-the-art technology to have their conditions treated without having to go to the hospital at all. Speaking of which, you know, I think it's good for people to know what exactly we're doing here with the robot. Um, Dr. Chen, you know, we're doing urology, general surgery, and gynecology procedures right now in our ambulatory center. Can you explain what are the common procedures and what conditions we're typically treating? Uh, yeah, sure. Um, so, yes, the robot is a great technology can, that can be leveraged to do many operations across different specialties. For example, in gynecology, um, which involves removal of the uterus, fibroids, fallopian tubes, and the ovary, um, these can, this can be done used for a variety of benign reasons like bleeding or even for cancer. Um, in general surgery, uh, one of the most common operations we do are hernias, which come in uh, different locations, including uh, the groin area, the abdomen area, even the diaphragm hernias, they can be small or large. Uh, for smaller, easier, or earlier um, hernias, a lot of these are done open or laparoscopic, where the robot really shines is for large, complex operations. Um, and we have even started, uh, Dr. Cheever and I, doing abdominal wall reconstructions in the ASC. These operations are um, essentially the largest hernia operation a person can have, and they are really used to treat larger uh, recurrent and complex hernias. So we're really happy to bring that here and uh, offer that to our members. And, you know, I think that uh, a really important topic to concentrate on is urology, because that is the most common procedure that's done. And prostate surgery is one of the most common procedures that people have using robotic surgery. Dr. Winston, can you describe our overall cancer care and specifically how robotic surgery helps patients with colon, with prostate cancer? Absolutely. So, prostate cancer is the second most common cancer that men experience. And unfortunately, in this area, we have a lot of patients with prostate cancer, which can be very scary, not only for them, but also for their families. When a cancer diagnosis is made, um, we have a strong, robust program in place to help patients and their families get the information they need to make the right decision. A lot of our patients do elect for prostate um, removal um, with the robot, and we're able to offer that safely here at the Largo Inventory Surgical Center. Um, 
I would say from the time the patient is diagnosed to the time they receive surgery, it's generally anywhere from two to four weeks with two weeks being our target. The patients are able to come here, get the surgery done safely, go home the same day, they have follow-up with uh, the rest of the team the next day and in, in the office, and the outcomes are, are excellent. They have less side effects. Um, they're able to return to their, their life um, sooner, and most importantly, their cancer gets cured. Uh, so we are, we're very excited that we're able to offer that safely here at our ambulatory surgical center, and um, we look forward to continuing to offer different surgeries in neurology, such as for kidney surgery and bladder surgery. Yeah, can you talk a little bit more about that? I know that we're doing a wide range of urology procedures, and there's a couple more. Some of the, of the tumor in the kidney. Uh, we're also doing some reconstructive cases with the bladder, uh, and those, ca those cases also, people are going home the same day um, safely uh, to their families. Well, that's great. So if I'm a patient, how do I know if I'm a good candidate for robotic surgery? That is a, that's an excellent question, Dr. Tubar. I would say that, that that starts with the conversation with the patient and the surgeon. Um, the number one goal of any surgery is like safety and whatever the problem is and you're fixing it. So before any patient comes to, make, to get ambulatory surgery performed, there's a conversation not just with the surgeon but also with the anesthesiologist, with the primary care doctor to make sure that they are healthy for the surgery. While a lot of our patients can get surgery done safely in our ambulatory surgical center, there are some patients that do require more support. Um, those patients who are more sick or have other medical conditions. Um, but generally for most patients, if they're healthy, if they have low control of their medical problems such as diabetes, hypertension, they can be done safely here in the ambulatory surgical center and return home all for a speedy recovery. I always tell my patients that when you get surgery done, you do not get better in the hospital. You get better at home. Mm -hmm. And if we can get you home sooner, you're going to get back to your life sooner. And Dr. Chen, you actually have some experience in getting people healthier for surgery. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, thank you. Um, yeah, you know, surgery is like running a marathon, you know, and you know, the way you think about it is um, we can't, you can't just wake up in the morning one day and decide you're going to run a marathon. Well, some people can. I, I can't. Um, it, we, you have to train and prepare for it because it's a huge stress on your body. And so um, there's a program that is in the Mid-Atlantic States that we've developed called Surgical Prehabilitation. And it's the idea that the stronger you are going into surgery, any surgery, open, laparoscopic, robotic, any surgery or procedure, you're going to be stronger coming out of it. So um, this, how, so the getting ready process involves eating well, uh, improving your nutrition, exercising, uh, improving your diabetes uh, number targets if you have diabetes, improving um, your uh, exercise tolerance, uh, quitting smoking if you do quit. And all those things add up to decrease risks of complications after surgery, such as uh, wound infections, um, heart attack, stroke, just, you know, the whole, the whole myriad of surgical complications. So Dr. Tibar, I'm sure there are some people at home or even that's come to our office that says, so you can operate with a robot, so what? Why is that special? Why is that, what's the big deal using a robot for surgery? Right, and, and that's a great question, Dr. Winston. Um, the robot and the robotic surgical systems are an enhanced tool that really make our hands and our eyes more powerful and more capable. You know, there's greater precision, there's better visualization. When we're looking in that console, we're seeing in 3D, zoomed in. And what that means is we can do very delicate surgery uh, on a wide variety of conditions and a wide variety of patients very accurately. And some studies have shown that in some procedures, you can have less pain, less blood loss, and definitely compared to open procedures, there's a lot less scarring, pain, and a quicker recovery. One of the big advantages of robotic surgery is it allows us to do surgery that could otherwise, open surgery, big incisions, 
it allows us to do that minimally invasively. That's a big plus for patients. Um, you know, but one of the things that patients ask me a lot is, what are the risks of robotic surgery? You know, as opposed to laparoscopic or open surgery, is it different? And how safe is it for patients? And I think all of us get asked that question. Uh, and the, I think the answer is that robotic surgery is safe. And the question, then the next question is, well, how do you know it's safe? And the answer to that is research. Um, we, this is not, even though this sounds brand new, robotic surgery, this has been going on for 30 years. For 30 years, in neurology and general surgery, uh, we've been doing robotic surgery and we know exactly safely to get patients home the same day versus, versus traditional open surgery. Patients will be in the hospital for sometimes three days, sometimes a week. Um, that's not to say there aren't risks, but those risks are very minimal. There's, with any surgery, there's a risk of infection. Uh, with any surgery, there's a risk of injury to surrounding organs. Uh, with the robot, with robotic surgery, because you're using a microscope, because there's generally a two-surgeon team for most of these surgeries, uh, you have extra eyes, extra expertise to keep those risks at bay. Thanks. And for people out there who are wondering, Dr. Chen, what is recovery like? What's it like after surgery? And does everybody go home the same day? Yeah, great question. So, uh, you know, even though the robot goes in through really small incisions to do surgery, uh, you're still essentially getting the same operation on the inside. You're still getting your prostate removed, you're getting your hernia fixed, uh, but the incision is just smaller and the access is smaller. So uh, while the goal is to go home the same day for many of these operations, uh, sometimes because of that larger surgery on the inside, uh, people still stay overnight typically. Typically though, you know, uh, because the incisions are smaller and the length of stay is lower because um, then the need for narcotics is less, you're back on your feet sooner, uh, some people, you know, go back to work sooner um, because of this. Uh, that's a great point, Dr. Shane. Uh, one of my, my patients, probably one of the most common things they end up saying to me is like, Doc, I'm always, like, it wasn't as painful as I thought. And the reason why is that when you think about surgery, most of us are thinking about the big incision that you may see your grandma and your grandpa had. But that's the robotic surgery, the incisions are really like a keyhole. And because of that, there's less pain here at the entry site. And with that, that means there's less tissue that needs to heal. That means you can get back to doing your real your life. Because let's think about it. That's the reason why you get surgery. You want to get back to your normal base. And robotic surgery can get you there safely and efficiently. That's fantastic. Thanks, Dr. Winston. Well, I want to encourage anyone who has questions for us to put them in the chat. Um, we'll also be posting the, comment, the questions in the comments section uh, in the recorded version of this talk. We are live right now. Um, we really, really appreciate everyone joining and watching us today. You know, we've been able to really work together as a team and bring robotic surgery away from the hospital for ambulatory surgery center so our patients can get the benefits of it uh, closer to home and without having to go into a hospital. Um, one question, what can I expect as a patient? So if I'm a new patient considering surgery, what would... Right. So we got a question uh, which is, what, what, what can I expect as a patient if I'm a new patient considering surgery? So I, I, I think that when a problem presents and your doctor recommends surgery, um, I think that the, the next step within our system is that we make sure that you are healthy for that surgery. So you're going, to, we have an entire separate department um, of pre-admission testing where basically you get, you get a tuna, <laughs> um, for lack of a better word. You, you go, you make sure your heart's okay, your lungs are okay, your blood work is looking good, and making sure that you are safe is strong enough for surgery. And then what, to Dr. Chen's point, if, you, if, there, if there is a problem, we're able to kind of get you in and, and fix that problem before getting you into the OR. And you have a lot of nurses, a lot of anesthesiologists and other surgeons looking at your chart, making sure that you're healthy for surgery. Once you are cleared for surgery, and, and so let's say this is robotic surgery, you come in, um, you, get, you get prepped, um, you take a little quick nap, um, and while you're asleep, 
your, your, your surgical team of surgeons, anesthesiologists, and nurses and techs will make sure that you are comfortable and safe so that the surgery can be, be performed. Most the robotic surgery can take as short as one hour or as long as eight, depending on what the indication is. You go to recovery, most people are in recovery for a, a couple of hours, they're from two to four hours, and they'll go home. One for the surgical team is calling you. Sometimes two people are calling you just to make sure that you're doing okay um, and to make sure that you and your family have all the things you need to support you during your recovery. The one thing I think that's important to mention is our enhanced recovery after surgery program, right? And that's part of the preparation for surgery. This is uh, a method of getting patients ready for surgery that really decreases pain and speeds recovery after surgery. It's been well studied in hospitals for large surgery, and we've been able to bring it here to our ambulatory surgery center. So one of the you know things to expect before surgery is we're going to have a lot of education about support. Now we have modified guidelines where you can eat solids a little closer to surgery. You can have liquids a little closer to surgery. We actually give you a carbohydrate drink before surgery. And then our anesthesiologists and surgeons use a variety of medications before surgery, during surgery, and after surgery to reduce nausea, right, to decrease pain, and to speed your recovery. So it's a really great advance that I certainly have seen make my patients' lives better and surgery go much more smoothly. Yeah, it's important to mention that, you know, it's your need for narcotics. As we know, narcotics it, uh, was the medication of choice to decrease pain um, for a long time, and it comes with a lot of side effects, such as nausea, vomiting, severe constipation, and even fatal addiction. So the goal with smaller cuts and is multimodal pain agents, so using other pain agents that are not narcotics based, can help decrease the use of this and actually help speed up the surgery. Um, it depends. <laughs> it depends, yeah, it definitely depends. Uh, compared to open surgery, uh, it can. Uh, it can make kind of complex surgery um, a little bit faster. You know what I often tell my patients, and I don't know if you guys ever use this analogy, it, it does take time. And in some cases, it can take even a little longer than a similar laparoscopic or open procedure. I problem in a way that's really less painful. Um, robotic surgery, you know, the time on the table is one measurement, but also the time in the hospital and the time out of work is another measurement. So while your time on the table may be around the same as traditional operation, but I think the more important measures are how quickly are you getting home and how quickly are you getting back to your regular life. And on those two measures, uh, it is absolutely much faster than traditional open surgery and often comparable or sometimes a little bit uh, faster than laparoscopic surgery. So, uh, Also keep in mind that every patient is different, every surgery is different. So if you get to, if you have a, diagnosis and surgery is recommended, you know, really ask hard questions to your surgeon, um, sometimes even to two surgeons, um, because this is, uh, we're happy that you logged on today to hear our perspective, uh, but when it comes down to your individual surgery, and your individual health, like that's gonna be something that your surgeon who, is, who knows you and knows your chart is gonna be able to best answer those questions. Um, but definitely ask those questions. Ask is robotic surgery, right for you. Awesome. Well, that's it. Okay. All right. Well, that's all the questions we've gotten. Uh, thanks everyone for joining us today. Again, this session will be recorded, so you're welcome to watch it on our Facebook page. I want to really, again, thank Dr. Gao Chen from General Surgery, Dr. Doc Winston, our fantastic urologist, and I'm Dr. Rahul Tibar. Uh, and thanks for joining us today. We appreciate it.